1912, we celebrated the 5th anniversary, 5th century of the Armenian alphabet. We can also consider Karabakh movement uh, and also the commemoration of the centenary of the Armenian genocide in 2015. What's more important is not the importance attached to it by the state, but uh, the public participation and involvement. It doesn't concern only an elite group. It's also important for ordinary people in the society. In 1990s, in April, in 1990, in Soviet Armenia, the Karabakh movement was going on, and. Armenia suffered a lot. They were aware of the massacres of Armenia in Baku and Sumgayet, and they could make assessments about what happened in 1915. They also un saw the approach of the Soviet government towards what happened in Sumgayet and Baku. They had also experienced the earthquake in Spidak and they were experiencing for the first time being in blockus, blockade and then came the attacks by Azerbaijan from Nakhchivan site voluntary groups were created in Armenia these armed groups took up arms and went to the conflict. It was time for taking up weapons and arms at the end of the 19th century and at the beginning of the 20th century. So these persons were called, these voluntary armed groups were called Fedayis. So the idea of victim emerged in the minds of the people. And at this point in time, well, most of them said that they created some posters some slogans which were intended to address to Armenian people. So the point is that these posters and these messages, slogans, were the most visible expression of the national sentiment. So it was at the time of the revolutions and mass movements and these slogans and posters reflected the major changes which lasted for centuries. So these posters affected the state of mind of the public for a long period of time. Although these posters had been created by political groups, they were also testimonies to what happened back then. These are essential parts of the identity. So there are different threads in these nodes. In each of these, when we look at different microcosmos, we can also have an idea of the macrocosmos. At the times of the Karabakh movement, so 
So we counted 375 posters which refer to the genocide. These posters are mentioned again and again on every year on the 24th of April. These posters, well, we can talk about 200 posters which raise the issue of the genocide. According to a simple observation of these posters, we can see a constant change. Some of these posters ask for justice, some of the posters ask for recognition of the genocide, which were gradually replaced by other messages and other posters, which asked for independence and which ask for final settlement of the problem. So 1990 was the 75th year of the genocide. So that was how the monument of the victims of the genocide looked like. Well, I have five chapters in my presentation. In the first part, well, is about paying homage, respects to the memory of the victims. Well, the poster says the whole globe is mourning to commemorate the memory of the victims. The second poster says a large sized replica of the monument of the genocide victims. 1896, 1990, 1915, are, these dates are inscribed on these posters. All these dates indicate the dates when Armenians were massac well, collectively massacred. Another poster says, respect for the uninterred souls of millions of martyrs of the Armenian people. This is another poster which says eternal memory to the victims of the Met Yeager Nachivan compatriots. Another poster says the goddess Temida, Virgin Mary and the Stone World. This poster underlines the insensitivity of the world. People walk with the symbols of Mary, Virgin Mary, which is assimilated to the justice. And then it says, oh, human justice, let me spit in your face. It is a verse of the famous poet Siamanta. It was in relation to the massacre that took place in Adana in 1909. Another poster says, well, there is a series of pictures. There is an archive expert called Sinaseto. It was very difficult to do it during the Soviet period. So the poster says, 75 years of the Armenian genocide. So much evil. If our children forget, let the future swarm, scorn us. There are also some spelling mistakes, which means that these posters were prepared not by intellectuals but by ordinary people. There are other posters about how we need to commemorate the victims, how we need to pay homage to the victims of the massacre. Tashnekin party says it is about salvation of the homeland. So it was the branch of the Tashnekian party in Armenia. At the second 
part. Now it is, uh, you know, there are these are posters about future, uh, sorry, about past and present. April 24, Sungai Tembakum, with the same handwriting. It's the same hand. So, Armenians put Turks and Azeris fell into the same basket. And then it says one bit this Erzurum 1915 75 Mets Yegern Sumgayit Kansak Baku 1919. That's the same perception. So it uh, gave the message that the genocide continued under Soviet rule. And the other posters are m give more political messages. So this is a criticism of the Soviet rule. Genocide was continuing under the Soviet oppression. And the other is again an anti Soviet message. It says Kremlin. Well, account for the genocide well in Karabakh and Armenia. These criticisms are not against the Russian people but against the Soviet rule in Kremlin. At the next chapter, there are some pastors which give messages about appreciations and also judgments about the perpetrators. Here it's about the Republic of Turkey and Azerbaijan. The poster says the Kremlin, an academy of uh, per genocide perpetrators. And the next says the bloody treaty must indemnify. It refers to the convention signed in 1926 between the Republic of Turkey between under Atatürk's rule and Un Soviet Union. You see another version of this message. It says the genocide of Armenians is the consequence of the alliance of Russia and Turkey. So we need to also consider the 20,000 square kilometer lost and then 75,000 square kilometer given to Karabakh and Karabakh became part of then actually this territory became part of Azerbaijan. There is also an artistic expression of this which this symbolizes fascism after the Second World War. The worst things and evil was always associ associated with fascism. So, on this poster you see that all the evil is the consequence of the alliance between Kremlin and Azerbaijan. It is more than fascism itself. And Next one says, a people who forget its own history is doomed to re-experience it. And here there is an expression of combating and fight. The spirit of the Armenian martyrs is calling for struggle, it says. In 1990, well, it was a poster which called the spirit of the Armenian martyrs to fight. Here it says longevity is for struggling peoples. Next one is the speech of Crimean Hamling. It says in a place where weapons speak, where swords blaze. There is no place for appeals and petitions. So it was speech taken from his speech in the Kumkapu Church after Berlin Convention. 
Again, a message from Crimean Hayrik. It says, Armenian people put your trust in yourselves in the first place, in the force of your arms and your brains. For one can be saved when one makes an effort. The next one says, we must fight and not weep. Bring back the nation's losses with the force of arms. Seventy years later, the same opinion has been put forward once again. So the parole of the success we have had for centuries who heard it. What did our tears bring us? Let's stop weeping. Let's take up our arms and let's die freely on the battlefields. Here you see the same message, we should fight and not weep. And in the last one, it is based on the idea of fight. Another poster says, remaining in the empire is genocide itself, in itself. One of the important political parties was the party of national will. Yes, this poster said, remaining in the empire is genocide in itself. So, people saw a couple of people carrying such posters and they were encouraged by it. They hoped to get a concrete result with this. Another one says, genocide will be prevented by the restoration of a national statehood. Another one says, sorrow is forever if there is no struggle. Which gives account of the existing state of mind. It was very common in different locations. And I would like to conclude by this one. This is something which was mentioned today. Yes, that's how Armenians thought. All Armenian people, although I cited it a couple of times, the speech of the Jerisa Cherish, but this time it says, oh, well, in 1880 actually, all Armenian, our only salvation is uh, from our unity. Your only salvation is in your collective strength. What I mean is that on the 23rd April of 1990, we observed that, and it's also my personal opinion. I had also written an article about it. In Armenia, for Armenians, the model of victims of genocide were relegated to the background. Why didn't this happen in the diaspora? It's something different. 
but I can shortly say that the Karabakh movement was a revolution in itself. So Karabakh movement was a pioneer of the other revolutions that took place in Europe. That didn't happen in diaspora communities. And during revolutions, things take place very rapidly. What happened in Armenia in two and a half year? Well, took longer in for for the diaspora communities. That gave a consciousness, awareness to us. So. That's what led us to the victory during Karabakh war. <laughs>